gentlemen, they could not have asked for a better matchup in the semifinals of the NIT here at Madison Square Garden. Four teams, all nationally ranked, three of those from the top ten. We're going to have a great semifinal doubleheader. As you look at the first game, it will be the Seminoles of Florida State facing the Hoosiers of Indiana. I'm John Saunders along with Dick Vitale. And Dick, as we look at these tremendous matchups, there's no cupcakes right here. You're going right after the big guys, right out of the gate. Is that an advantage or a disadvantage? I think it's a tremendous advantage to get a true evaluation of your team. You can really rate your basketball team and find out your strengths and weaknesses. As opposed, for example, Clemson's going to jump out 9 and zip. Do you hear me, Cliff Ellis? They're going to be 9 and 0. Oh, but check who they play as he gets my Cupcake City Award this year for the Clemson Tigers. But right here, you find out legitimately how strong your team is. I think the preseason NIT is a great way to whet the appetite of the hoop fan and really get everybody stimulated for basketball. Uh, whet the appetite, but it's a little tough out of the gate, especially this year, because they removed a couple of weeks of practice. Is that more difficult? Well, John, I really think this. For the teams that are in the NIT each year, I think they should advance them one week in terms of practice. However, I think from November 1st to December 1st, four weeks is ample time to get your team ready to play and to perform. After a while, the kids get a little bored when you get to that fifth and sixth week in terms of getting ready for the season. Are you ready, partner? Absolutely. I am ready. I know I don't have to talk much after this, and we'll be back at seven with the first of two. UCLA and Seton Hall have all come to the Big Apple to battle for the preseason NIT title. Up first, the Seminoles ranked seventh, and the Indiana Hoosiers ranked fourth. And a pleasant good evening to you, everyone. Happy Thanksgiving to you and yours around the country. I'm Tom Meese. I'll be your studio host for tonight's College Hoop Action on ESPN. Standing by live are John Saunders and Dick Vitale at Madison Square Garden. We'll get to them in just a moment. First of all, let's familiarize you with the way that each of our final four in the preseason NIT have gotten to New York. Florida State with an easy win over Iowa State. Indiana did the same against Tulane, although the Green Wave made it interesting late. UCLA escaped at Pauley Pavilion against the stubborn UTEP squad. And Seton Hall with a come-from-behind victory on Saturday afternoon against Tennessee. The storylines tonight coming up after our first game, approximately 9.30 Eastern time. UCLA and Seton Hall. Ought to be another great one tonight from the Garden. Early in the season, but some teams have already had some big injuries. We'll detail that. And we'll have a look at what the future holds for Roly Massimino and the running rebels of UNLV. But up next, it's Florida State taking on Indiana live from Madison Square Garden. And sophomore guard Bob Sura is hoping to lead the Seminoles to another victory tonight. We'll be going to New York City for game one in just a moment. How much would you pay to drive? Madison Square Garden, the world's most famous arena in the world's most famous city. For a major part of the history of college basketball, this arena and the NIT were the last word in the sport. Now with center stage belonging to the NCAA tournament, the preseason NIT has become the showcase of the season ahead. Four teams ranked in the top 25, three of those ranked in the top 10. As a result, the first Final Four of this season promises to be a great one. We'll tip it off in just a moment with the first of two semifinals. Florida State and the Seminoles facing the Hoosiers of Indiana. Inside Madison Square Garden, I'm John Saunders along with Dick Vitale. Dick, we talked about this earlier today. It's not a great season like last year was for senior players, but of the great ones, we have three of them here tonight. John, we have Terry DeHair in the second game, the Seton Hall sharpshooter. In this game, we have the multi-dimensional one, Douglas Edwards, big inside power player, and Calbert Chaney, the smooth big-time scorer for Indiana. For Florida State, Coach Kennedy looks back at the last two years and knows that he got on the golf course after he played uh, Indiana. It came to an end. What do the Hoosiers know? Well, the Hoosiers do a super job in attacking zone defenses and against florida state they utilize the zone a great deal in their earlier matchups right here we see the reason why indiana is so successful they attack the gap of the defense the seam there's alan henderson with the slam jam bam after the attack into the seam i think today you will see pat kennedy restructure their defensive plan utilize some traps but come back and play man-to-man -man defense we'll find out when we tip off the first of two here from madison square garden when we return espn college basketball is brought to you by volvo volvo would like you to drive safely by canon america's number one copier company for 10 years running 
and by Bud Light. If you want great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down, make it Bud Light. Welcome back, everyone, to Madison Square Garden. John Saunders along with Dick Vitale. We're just about ready to tip it off. The semifinals of the NIT. Let's take a look at the starting lineups. We'll start with Florida State highlighting Bob Sura, who's off to just a tremendous start as a sophomore. Sam Cassell at the other guard. Meanwhile, the coach, of course, is Patrick Kennedy, who's done a tremendous job. His seventh year here at Florida State. Last year, first year in the ACC, won more games than any other first-year coach. In Indiana, we highlight another sophomore, Alan Henderson. We know about the seniors in uh, Cheney and Nover, but Alan Henderson has been their leading rebounder in the first two games with nine in each game. And, of course, Bob Knight, 22nd season, 488 wins, closing in on the 500 mark. The officials for tonight will be Sean Corbin. Mark Disteola and Joe Mingo. And for those who might wonder in these neutral games, they are out of the Big East. We're underway, and Bob Sura controls the opening set. Great matchup right here. Chris Reynolds and Sammy Cassell. Florida State, in their last game, came flying out of the gun. There's Sam Cassell, and he nails a three-pointer to start the game. He's been a big-time performer out of the gate for Florida State, playing the point guard slot with Charlie Ward, still playing football. Charlie Ward will be playing for Bobby Bowden against Florida and the Gators this weekend. Nice cut there by Calvert Chaney. The jumper won't fall. Henderson after the rebound and converts. They're really high on Henderson. They really feel his development physically. He's gotten a lot stronger over the summer. Had that big game against Tulane. Really dominated in the lane. And they needed the dominance as well as Tulane mounted a tremendous comeback from 30-plus down to get within 10. We have some great matchups here. Tremendous athletes playing head-to-head. -head, almost like an NBA situation where matchups become important. That's back court. They call it over and back, but Andre Reed thought that Matt Nover got a hand on it. Matt Nover seems like he's been around for about 10 years. We were teasing him in the opening uh, out there when they were warming up. Yeah, but did you hear his comment when he said seems like he's been here 10 years? He said it feels like it. Reynolds dishes it back out. Stolen away by Bob Sura. Shane after hit. Behind the back looking for Dovard. Can't get him. Great defensive play by Calvert Tra Chaney. Coming back defensively to get into that passing lane. Anticipates the pass by Sura. You will see the occasional flash of brilliance from Sura when it comes to a little hot dog move. He loves the crowd, loves to get him going. Cassell again for three, won't go, and a rebounding is Calvert Chaney. Good inside position by Chaney, one of the elements of Indiana's defense, Lock out. Henderson rattles that one home. You know, everybody talks about Chris Weber, certainly a dominant sophomore in college basketball, but Henderson is not far behind. He has good offensive skills, and he can block shots on the interior. Sir is open for three. That won't fall. High off the backboard. Edwards has the rebound stripped as he goes up, and it's Indiana's basketball. Key for Florida State, if they're going to have the big, dominant year, is right there, the big guy, Douglas Edwards. Consistency in his game is a must. Here's a look right now at the 2-1-2 pressure, but they'll rotate back into a man-to-man. -man. And they get the steal. Sura oh, nice pisses look. it off to Cassell, who converts. Nice two-man basketball. Good look. Sura has to head up at all times. And there's a relaxed general. Robert Montgomery Knight. 2-1-2. You've got to get to the wings against the 2-1-2. Ball is kicked. Reset the clock. And a 2-1-2 setup. The guy in the middle, really, if you put two people wide, you make him have to play two people. It's a very difficult area for him. There's a cut again. Greg Graham off the glass. This is at home. He's been playing brilliant. The reason Damon Bailey is not starting. Graham provides a lot of quickness and scoring ability. Cassell trying to do it by himself. Doesn't find anything. Not the role of a point guard, John. He has the mentality of a scorer. Henderson tries to do it by himself at the other end, and Sura controls. Whoa! With a man up long shot, baby! Mr. Henderson! Henderson with the help, and then at the other end, Cheney reverses it. Has a chance to be a player of the year candidate this year, big time. When you look at the great players in college basketball this season, the name Albert Cheney comes out. A little stack offensively. 
Edwards has got to get active. He's got to really try to move. He's being played by Henderson. Sir, a nice move underneath, but then has nowhere to go. Dobart up with it and drops it home. He's really a solid player. Doesn't get a lot of ink. You hear about Sammy Cassell and Douglas Edwards and certainly Bob Sura, but you don't hear about Dobart, a great role player. Reynolds, well, Henderson underneath, try to find Nova, but the defensive help was there. I think Indiana's a very difficult team to pressure and traps. They got some really good shooters that get open shots against the pressure. Cassell underneath to Edwards, Nova by himself. Looks like he got him on the wrist, but the officials no whistle. There's an excellent drop step by Douglas on the interior, too, taking the ball to the baseline. I think Pat Kennedy thought he got him on the wrist as well. Pat Kennedy learned the trade, working for Jimmy Valvano at Iona. Sir along the baseline, he's blocked by Nover. That's a special heart to have. Shot blockers inside really creates problems for the opposition. And especially if you can convert the block shot up in transition and have a guy like Cheney just knock it down. Indiana's four-point lead now, just about four minutes into this contest. Chris Reynolds, look at the defensive stance. One of the elements in Indiana's defense, pressure the basketball. Tonight on a win, beat the cutter to the ball, block out the four parts of their defense. Edwards, it won't go with the left hand. And Graham comes the other way. He's got Cheney on his wing, but this is to Reynolds, gets it back, and Cassell strips it off of Indiana. See, that really a good play right there. Kicks the ball to the right to the non-shooter. Pat Kennedy liked that rather than him going to the left to a shooter. We'll be back in a moment. Difficult team to pressure, John. Right here we see an example of Indiana flashes a guy to the post area. Calvert Cheney right there. Freeze it. And see right there, he's looking to bring the ball opposite the trapping area. And they bring the ball and they get numbers. They're attacking. They're trying to get a score against the pressure. Florida State does a good job with their tandem defensively coming back. The guy at the foul line, a guy deep. But I really think you give up too many open shots. And Indiana offensively, their efficiency rating in getting productive in terms of open shots is unbelievable throughout their career. Bobby Knight's career. Sam Cassell is furious. He thought the ball bounced off Greg Graham's foot, which it did. But the official said it then went off of Sam Cassell's foot. Indiana early on shooting 63%. You talk about those high percentage shots. They're getting them. There's another one from Calvert Cheney. Just a simple two-man play. Rolls to the basket. Execution, execution, execution. That's been the key for Indiana during the Bobby Knight era. Good man-to-man -man defense. They have several constants to their game, John. Defense being one and execution offensively. Edwards just bowls his way to the basket and draws the foul. When Douglas Edwards came out of high school, he was rated right behind Kenny Anderson as the second-best high school player. Certainly was one of the real dominant players. If you don't agree, he's number two. And that senior class had some great players. You think about Shaquille O'Neal. You think about Kenny Anderson. You think of Jimmy Jackson. Edwards' younger brother will be attending Miami. He told me his brother's fighting for a starting job. Steve, down there with uh, Leonard Hamilton, had a tough break losing Stevie Frazier yes. from out of New York City to an injury on the first day of practice. ACC should really be a tough fight this year. you got three top ten teams in America with Duke, North Carolina, Florida State, and right behind, waiting right there, anywhere from 11 to about 20, at Georgia Tech, and also you have to put in Wake Forest for Rodney Rogers. It's Damon Bailey who gives up the shot and tries to find Nova, saved underneath, and Florida State comes away with it. Nova, Nova turned away from the basketball. On the baseline, Dobart, it won't go. Dobart's got quick feet. He's an excellent transition player. Always trying to make the extra pass in Indiana, looking for the open man. The shot outside is a three-pointer from Graham that rattles in. That senior class of Indiana, they've won 56 games the last two years, 27 and 29. That's a lot of wins, John. They came out of high school rated very high. The Cheney Group, Graham, Pat Graham. Indiana now on a 12-2 run to open up a nine-point lead. Edwards, that won't go, and one and done. That's about it. Bailey runs into Cassell. The Florida State scrambling on defense, leaving men wide open. Graham can't get the shot. 
Sura the other way. Behind his back, leans in and draws the foul on Bailey. He was a big-time scorer in high school, but was not heavily recruited by the big people. In fact, early, he was chased by St. Joseph. He was chased by Duquesne. But then they got a call. Ed Donahue, the former coach of Pat Kennedy at King's College, called him up and said, Pat, I got a kid up here in Wilkes-Barre. That's unbelievable. You got to come up and get him. He went up to see him. They liked him. They ended up signing him. They had to fight Georgia Tech off late in terms of getting Sura. And I think Donahue, quite a guy. He coached Kennedy his first two years at King's College. And in the last two years, he said, you're a bricklayer, baby. Why don't you be an assistant coach? So his junior and senior year, he rode the bus as an assistant coach to Eddie Donahue. You see, sir, had 34 points against Iowa State. And Jimmy V was calling him Hondu, Hondu Havlicek. He was. By the way, I know you, uh, you spent some time hosting oh, Jimmy. Great. We had a great time. Place. I just talked to him recently. He said he just got your bill. <laughs> and he's a little upset. He thought the elevator rides were free. Uh, get so off my he's back. a little upset about those that. elevator rides. It's driving me nuts. We want to send our best along to Jimmy V, of course. Did a tremendous job the other night. Indiana converting on the other end. Evans now on the floor for them. He's a very important player. They're going to miss the void, I think, of losing Eric Anderson. And a guy like Evans has got to give him some productivity on that baseline. Sir cuts in, but it won't drop. Nice job by Edwards to chase it down to the hole. And that's an offensive foul. Send it the other way. Indiana really playing solid defensively and offensively. Evans becomes an important player because if you look at Indiana's front court, John, they're really not deep at all. There's the drive. Now look at the rotation over. Look at the defense. They rotate over to the basketball. They really always try to cut off driving lanes. Pat Kennedy upset about the call, and he calls a timeout. And now NBC commentator Bill Parcells is on hand to watch his buddy Bob Knight. Dick. He should be coaching. I was telling before the game, he's from Bergen County, where I grew up as a coach. Bill Parcells belongs on that sideline. Said he feels really good physically. And you know what? He used to be a scout for Bobby Knight when they were at West Point together. He was in their locker room before the game. He's telling Knight, he said, hey, remember the three-man play? Remember when we had Jimmy Oxley? Remember we had... I mean, it's amazing. He knows his basketball. And he could flat-out coach football. Graham along with that choke, but the good hustle by Indiana, they chase it down. Number 33 is Pat Graham now on the floor for Indiana as well. Wells, number 33, the senior in there for Florida State. This guy's a key. He can really stroke the ball. He's an excellent shooter, Brian Evans. He can give some positive minutes. It'll be a great help. Shot won't fall. Wells comes up with a rebound, and Cassell heads the other way. See, Sam's looking to shoot. He's looking to shoot off that dribble move, and I don't know if that's great at your point guard slot, John. It doesn't get other people involved. This kid's an NBA star in the future. He can get out in transition. He can knock down the long jump shot. He's become a little bit more active offensively. He is really going to have a great chance this year to be drafted exceptionally high in that NBA draft. Calvert Cheney, part of a 12-0 Indiana run, and it's coming off their defense. Look at Cheney now getting out in a break. Graham does it by himself, though, and gets a kind roll. Super quickness to the goal. They're really playing well, Indiana, defensively, offensively, especially at this time of the year. An experienced team. See, that's the advantage in terms of the rule right now. An experienced team like Indiana has an advantage over a team that loses a lot of players. Greg Graham is doing a nice job on Cassell defensively. They switch there. Wells takes it in, throws it hard off the glass, and finally gets it to drop. Excellent one-on-one -on -one move by Wells. They say he's really improved as a player. See how they flash and go opposite with the ball against the trap. Into the middle, they'll call it travel on Pat Graham. He was Mr. Basketball coming back from an injury, had a foot injury. Was red-shirted. He came out of high school. You talk about a guy that can stroke that jump shot. He was part of that great class that also included Lawrence Funderburg and Chris Lawson. Both have transferred. Funderburg now a star at Ohio State. Lawson down at Vanderbilt. 
Sura, long with a three-pointer. Edwards with a good job to rebound and then convert a Good offensive rebound by Edwards. You know, he had 38 two years ago at Syracuse to carry a dome against Billy Owen. So he could flat out fly. Turnover. Oh, Edwards. Nice. There it is, Jam City. Seminole said they love it. Bobby Bowden jumped out of his seat back there in Seminole Land. Said, hey, I like them. He's got to get ready for Steve Spurry and the Gators this weekend. Ball was kicked first. Indiana basketball. Sammy Cassell with that good look. There's the trail man. Good night. Hello. Skywalker time. Chris Reynolds checks back into the game. You know, we've talked about Sam Cassell, and, and you've mentioned the fact that he's trying to shoot. Not great for your point guard, but Sammy has played a lot of point guard over his career. He was a point guard in high school at Dunbar in Baltimore, so... Oh, he's an excellent player. There's no question. He's a combo guard to play either position. When he's not shooting well, I think he starts to press, and he tries to take that extra shot that's not there, and everybody else stands around. One thing, though, about Sam Cassell is he's not going to stop shooting it. <laughs> I still like it. I still like Duke, though. You know, you talk about point guard Sammy Cassell, and the reason, very simple. That formula with Bob Hurley at the point, Mike Krzyzewski, who, by the way, today, Bobby Knight sang his praises like you couldn't believe at lunch, and there's Chaney at a baseline floater. He said that Mike Krzyzewski, Krzyzewski excels in every basic area that's important to coach. Recruiting, public relations, the technical aspects of the game. Chaney now six for eight from the field. Dobart, this is a pretty tough shot. Dobart's got that nice turnaround jump shot. They got to get the ball in his hands a little bit more, John. There are a lot of offensive weapons on the Florida State team. See, there's the trap. It's going to leave guys wide open. They're going to get the open shot. Well, there's the deflection. Good defense right there. But seven out of ten times, they'll come down with the open shot. See, that's that oh, just by himself, and then Byron Wells goes over the back. You're not going to beat Indiana with that kind of execution offensively. Shot selection becomes very important. I want to remind everybody, college football coming up Thanksgiving with your turkey. And a little college football. Texas A&M in Texas. Texas has already wrapped up the trip to the Cotton Bowl. And then on Friday, it's LSU and Arkansas. You mean Texas A&M's wrapped Texas up that trip? Texas A&M. They've wrapped up that trip. They're undefeated. you got to salute them for that. Hello! And all the NBA Whoa. fans jump and they say, well, baby, Calvin Cheney. Woo! I love him. I've been a big fan of his throughout his career. Lorenzo Hands, number 11 for Florida State. He's a slasher. Senior, good role player off the bench. Getting a lot of minutes now with Charlie Ward, not here. Wells is open and knocks it down. That's just a two-pointer. Matt Kennedy was singing his praises in terms of getting quality minutes about a guy that really has developed. Indiana really defines teams, defines a team in terms of having roles. You look at Reynolds, he's the defensive stopper on a perimeter. You look at a guy like, for example, Cheney, he's the scorer. They really understand their roles designated by the general to each player. Every year, Jeff, yeah. think about it. Every year, they're right there in the top 20 in a nation, year in and year out. Solid program. Wide open is Evans. Shots no good, and quickly, Dobart is there, or rather, Edwards is there for the rebound. Florida State's got to get a little bit more ball movement. One pass and shot. See, there's another example. One pass and shot. Not making the extra pass, which is important to break in defensive stand. They're not getting up the floor the way they did against Iowa State ahead of the defense. Cheney, way out. And that one's over top of the backboard. Well, the reason for that, again, is when you're shooting well and you're scoring, it really gives an uplift to every part of your game. Calvin Cheney's going to get a break. You know, I was talking earlier about the 56 wins for Indiana the last two years in the Cheney era with Cheney Grant. They had 86 wins in their three years, talking about Quinn Buckner's group back in the mid-70s. Now, they didn't play as many games, but these kids, if they have a big, big year, they can tie that group or catch that group. Cassell with the miss returns around. 
can't get the shot off. Indiana's Chris Reynolds comes away, spins around or almost around Cassell. Very limited offensively, gets maximum out of his game, though, and understanding how to play. Big time player right there. There's a PG here, baby. Prime time performer, Allen Henderson. Indiana's lead is 11. There'll be three great Souths this year in that Big Ten. Glenn Robinson, get ready, America, for Glenn Robinson at Purdue. Evans dishes it to Hands, who reverses it and scores. Lorenzo Hands, somebody broke down defensively for Indiana. No communication. That's forcing the play. Really forcing the play. That's not Indiana basketball. Pat Kennedy certainly saying that. <laughs> what a job he did last year. Transition into the tough ACC. But let me tell you something. The Metro Conference has some quality teams, too, when they were in there with Louisville, Without much North question. Carolina, Charlotte this year. 28-19, the Hoosiers in front. You work hard, so when the day is done... Welcome back to Madison Square Garden, site of the National Invitation Tournament preseason variety, semifinals and finals. John Saunders along with Dick Vitale in Indiana and the Hoosiers with a 28-19 lead. And Florida State just is not shooting the basketball very well, 35% from the field. They're getting hammered on the board as well. Bob Sura who had 34, Bob Knight has found a way to shut him down. 0 for 6 from the field, and 0 for 2 from the charity strike. Well, guys, they come in hot here in the bar, and maybe that happens. Last night, Tom Gugliotta came here, went back out, 0 for 8. He tried to star in front of his family and friends, but it wasn't there against the Knicks for the Washington Bullets. Tough to do it here in the garden. Number 15 for Florida State is Scott Shepard. Ooh, yeah, nice job by Reed to come over and help out. Interesting story, Scott Shepard from out of Indiana was a, one of the finalists for Player of the Year. Mr. Basketball, he can shoot the ball. He's all fired up playing against the Hoosiers because they didn't recruit him. Also wore number two for the first two games of the year, which is illegal. That's an illegal number. You're not allowed to wear number one and two. Uh, no help defensively at all. All the players of Florida State staring at their man. Nobody sees the ball to rotate over to give any help to take the driving lane away. Shepard, what a family of basketball at Carmel, Indiana. His dad, Billy, was off Mr. Basketball. Wells was all alone underneath. He couldn't get it to fall. And Reed, fortunately, was there to pick up the rebound for Florida State. Hey, get a little help right here. Look, nobody helps. They're all staring at the ball. Look at those guys. Nobody rotates over. That's a no-no defensively. <laughs> Matt Nova comes back into the game. Scott Shepard, here's a story. Unbelievable. Carmel, Indiana. You ready for this? His dad, Billy, is Mr. Basketball in the state of Indiana. Played three years in the ABA. Played for Butler. His uncle, David, he went to IU for one year, then starred down at Ole Miss, and his granddad, who just retired as the AD down in Carmel, played in the St. Louis Cardinals organization. Baseball was a star in basketball and football out of Butler, so that family knows hoops. But Indiana felt with their personnel that they really didn't need a player of his stature in terms of the backcourt, and he wanted to go to the ACC, so he visited Wake Forest, Carolina, and Florida State. They're calling the foul against Nover underneath because he fought to get the rebound. A little push under there. He's one of those steady players. Doesn't get a lot of publicity. Gives you some physical presence in the lane. He's got great lanes. Excellent jumper. Scott Shepard, as we said, had to change the number from the number two, which the ACC they will not allow. Well, that shouldn't be allowed anywhere. But, John, he was so excited after the Iowa State game when he found out they were playing the Hoosiers, and now he's got his chance right here. He's all excited. His family's probably all pumped up in Carmel, beautiful city in the Into the lane, bounces it off his own foot. Reynolds lobs it up for Henderson. Hard up. Oh, what a quick play. Tremendous agility to make that happen with the left hand after the missed layup. He and Glenn Robinson hooked up against each other in high school. Glenn Robinson's team dominated them out there at the Hoosier Dome. That's going to be an interesting battle when Purdue hooks up with Indiana. Jim Cady's got a good one. Get a chance to see Purdue this weekend coming up. Yeah, gets Kniff off classic here on ESPN. Sir, a nice pass from his seat of his pants to Reed. Finally, it's knocked down by Edwards. Good offensive rebound. Oh, bullet pass. 
from Randall Tim, but Graham doesn't get it. Florida State's a very explosive club. One quick spurt, they can get right back. Sir just lets it fly. There it is. Up near the NBA strike. Down five, and they haven't played well. Indiana played well in the first ten minutes. Sir's first field goal of the game, and when you're a shooter like he is, you're just going to keep letting it go. Nova breaks free and gets hammered. Excellent curl move execution against the man-to-man -man defense. Indiana so efficient, utilizing screens, wall movement, excellent spacing. Sam Cassell coming back into the game, as is Rodney Dobard. Shepard and Reed go to the bench. When you get Charlie Ward back, John, they're going to have a little bit more diversity. And as Pat Kennedy was talking about yesterday, he's going to be more a luxury this year coming in in January as opposed to being a guy that's going to step out and start immediately. But he's a great luxury to have because he's a bona fide winner, tremendous competitor, great attitude. A oh, tremendous attitude. He'll be right there battling for the Heisman Trophy next year. Put it down. Bobby Charlie Bowden Ward will be right there. Without question. Bad news, though, for Pat Kennedy is that uh, Chuck Graham is lost for the entire season now. He will need reconstructive surgery on his knee. Well, that's already, another shooter. Already injuries have taken its toll. Dwayne loses Tim Lewis, a solid player. Edwards, a nice move, and then leans it back to drop it. Well, poor defense right there by Indiana. Post defense, not really what Bobby Knight likes to teach. Been denied a ball, didn't beat the man to the ball. Nice job by Henderson to keep it alive. He has really become much more active. There's the extra pass. Winging it around, won't fall. Bounces right into the hands of Nova. He loses it. Cheney has it and drops it. Well, he loses it in the hands of the right guy because Talbot Cheney knows how to score. Cheney now with 15 points. Can you imagine this team if they had Thunderbird? Oh, yeah. right. Cassell, good job to go off to the rebound. Again, Edwards. Douglas Edwards starting to use that body of his, spreading people away. Taking a lot of space. Indiana once led by 15. It's now four hard, but you can't stop that. I'd get out of that trap. I really would. I think after a while, it's good to utilize in terms of tempo. It's good to utilize for certain spurts. But against Indiana, they're eventually going to get the easy layup. Indiana's got some good athletes. They don't have plotting kind of people. Well, tried to get it into Edwards. Tipped it away. Oh, nice pass. Reynolds misses the layup, though. Nice job by Dobard to change it a little. Poor Reynolds. Now the shooter has the open layup. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh. Sir, again, out near the NBA stripe. We've got a good one right now, 37-31. Bob Knight Hoosiers, big lead. He's starting to slip again as Graham with a nice dish down into the paint. We'll be back as Calvert Cheney hammers it home. What an excellent pass by Greg Graham right here, John. And they get the great angle cut to the goal. There's the penetration. Now watch the angle cut right here by Cheney. He's going to explode on the baseline. There he is right there. Boom. Bingo, bango, boom. What an unbelievable play. Good two-man game. Very unselfish team. Always looking to get the ball to each other. But Florida State's made a great run from 15 down, down six, and they haven't shot well. Sura almost comes up with the steal. Nice job by Graham to hang on to it. Shady uses the curl move exceptionally well, where he really runs the guy off the screen, curls out for the basketball. Got to know your options. Got to know who the guys are that you want to score. Shady, after screens, likes to step back. Shot clock is down below 10. Henderson. Sura wanted to travel, but he gets whistled for the foul. They talk about post play in terms of points of emphasis, try to clean up post play on the interior. Bobby Knight was really excited about that yesterday when we spoke to him about it. He was really upset. He thinks that they don't allow the defensive player to get really an edge down here. Henderson trying to get inside position. There's a double team on him, and there's a little bump. He's got excellent agility. Great family. Doctor, his dad, a cardiologist, mom, an educator. 
in and out, but it comes right back out to Greg Graham. Watch them screen. Try to read screen. Very important to play for Indiana. Utilize the screen. I thought Steve Walker was the best I've ever seen in college using the screen when he played for the Hoosiers. Henderson's gotten a lot stronger. He's able to hold post position a lot better than he did last year. Nice firing pass down into there. Graham, again, won't get the layup to go in. Surge just pulls up for three and rattles it in. Well, the one thing about Florida State, they play so loose and easy. They have great flexibility and a freedom. Almost very similar to Syracuse, where the kids in Syracuse in transition. I really believe that's why they become better NBA players, because they're allowed to have that freedom to take the shot. Edwards with the steal to Sura. Oh, he's back. Oh, that's that's got to be intentional. Sura is on the floor. There's no, sh no question that's a two-shot situation. Oh, so you talk about a hard-nosed, tough kid. Out of Woodsbury, Pennsylvania. Tremendous high school score. There he is, goes into the goal. Well, he grabs him with the left hand. I don't know about the intentional, John, but he definitely was going after him hard and heavy. I don't think there's any question about the foul. That he was trying to foul him. Yeah, no doubt. And if, he is, if that's what his intent is, then it's intentional. Well, intentionally, you know, the difference is two shots plus the basketball. Absolutely. Sura, by the way, ready for this? Only two high school players have ever received the key of the city in Woodsbury. I'll play a little trivia with you. Who would have been the other guy? He played football. No. Oh, he played football. He was a pigskin superstar. He played at the Golden Dome. He was little. He's got a brother at Syracuse. The Rocket. Playing in your territory, up in Canada. He's not playing at all right now. Oh, <laughs> oh nobody back defensively. Oh, and again he gets hammered. He is really getting hammered, taking the ball to the goal, but I think he likes that contact. He loves going to the free throw line. See, he's releasing against Indiana. He's sneaking behind the defense. And he goes to the line now with a chance to put Florida State on top after being down 15. Matt Kennedy said that one major difference he learned in the transition from the Metro to the ACC is the tremendous sense of basketball pride that exists in the ACC and also the intensity level in every game. Because the Metro has some solid programs. I mean, Louisville is certainly solid. Tulane's good. And watch the University of North Carolina Charlotte this year. Jeff Mullins has a team that can really create problems. Todd Leary into the game number 30 for Indiana. You'll recall him last year against Duke was almost single-handedly brought them back in the Final Four. He's been playing really well in the preseason. He also played in high school with Eric Montross. They won the high school state championship together. Played at Lawrence North High School out of Indianapolis. Eric going to have a big year this year for North Carolina. He's improved so much at the end of the year, the big guy. Sarah almost with a steal on Larry. Janey. The quick kiss and Greg Graham travel. Excellent defense and rotation by Florida State. See, they're playing better offensively, John, and it's really picked up their game on a defensive end as well. It's so great to be here at the Mecca, Madison Square Garden. I had a blast here this morning. You came in a little bit later, but I was by myself. A boy, a ball, a dream. With my ball shooting here. Dreaming that I was playing for Seton Hall and beating Indiana at the buzzer. The sell is short. I know that uh, it might have been a ball in a dream, but it, certainly you are far from being a boy, Dick. <laughs> <laughs> well, I acted about slow. <laughs> you always tell me that anyway. 25 seconds to go in a 37-37 game. Great way to tip it off the semifinals here in the NIT. Well, these are two heavyweights. These are two Riddick bows. I mean, this is not any... Oh, nice cut. Leary gets all alone under there, and Cassell, up in the air, gets on his back. Hesitated. Florida State explosive, like I said earlier, when they went down about 10. They were a very good spurt basketball team. They got too many athletes, and they play at such a fast pace. Join Tom Means at halftime. He will preview game number two, UCLA and Seton Hall. 
injuries. Dick, we talked about a few of those. We'll have an update on that. And a look back at the NIT. Tom Meese coming up at halftime. And it's the first of two. You know, every year the NIT kicks off with some quality teams. Last year we sat here and we watched the uh, unveiling, really, of that Oklahoma State team of Byron Houston. We've had so many outstanding teams that have played in that preseason. And it's a great way. It eliminates those marshmallows, those cupcakes, those automatic. You can line up, I can line up, we can take Jimmy Valvano, and we can beat the nine they're going to play. And then game 10, you ready for this? Bill Parcells and I were looking at the schedule together. Game 10 at Duke. You think they'll be ready for the Duke he's dead? Nine and zip, you better put it down. Nine and one. Talk about going from the cupcake Woo! into the full course. There's Bill Parcells again. Seeing his buddy Bob Knight up by one now, thanks to Todd Leary. Parcells was a power forward. I told him before the game, I said, Phil, cut it out, both of these writers, power forward. You have Brick City, USA, a big wide body. Chris Reynolds comes back in as a defensive specialist. Indiana up by two. A chance to get a good shot here, go in at halftime with a tie. Florida State, let's see who they put it in the hands of. Derek Carroll, they better get it off. They don't get, oh, don't get it off. Don't tap it, don't tap it. Too late. Too late. Good job by the officials early in the season as well. I mean, no. Right now, you look at Corbin and also Vistatola. Got a nice little paisan out there blowing the whistle. Florida State was down 22-7. They trail by two now at a halftime. Right now, let's take it back to Tom Means. All right, John. So Florida State's basketball team almost as explosive at times as the vaunted football team. They were down, as you said, by double digits in the game, but trailed by only two at halftime. Lots coming up at our intermission. We'll take a look at the latest news from the world of college basketball and view some of the sights and sounds of the preseason NIT so far. But as we go to break, our score at halftime, Indiana up by two, 39-37. We'll be back in a moment. ESPN College Basketball is brought to you by the local agents of the Farmers Insurance Group. Ask them about life insurance. And by the people of Nike who encourage you to just do it. Indiana, Florida State, Seton Hall, UCLA. Those are our four teams you're watching tonight on ESPN semifinal coverage of the preseason NIT. And, of course, all the teams happy to spend Thanksgiving weekend in New York City in the final four before the regular season starts. But maybe there's no player happier to be in the basketball mecca of the world than UCLA's Ed O'Bannon. He's finally back playing full-time for the Bruins after trials and tribulations due to knee surgery. Yes, as you will see later tonight, O'Bannon is back. The former high school player of the year suffered his knee injury before his freshman year. This year will be the first full season of basketball for O'Bannon, who says he's ready to put his surgically repaired knee to the test. I think my, my biggest goal was to get back to my high school form, uh, coming from high school to college form. So uh, um, I think I'm at that, at that stage now. Hopefully, uh, during the season... Um, personally, I can progress uh, and, and um, get better and, and uh, do a lot better than I did in high school. He is six foot eight. He is 215 pounds. He'll wear number 31 for the UCLA Bruins, Ed O'Bannon. Watch him tonight in game two, 21st rank UCLA, a survivor against UTEP in the last round, taking on number six, Seton Hall. That comes your way on ESPN uh, right around 9 o'clock Eastern time, 6 Pacific time this evening, the second part of our doubleheader. Other games in action tonight. Only one to report on right now. Exhibition action. Georgia Bulldogs at home in Athens taking on Marathon Basketball. We trust that if this game goes into overtime, they won't call it a marathon, but we'll have to wait and see. Georgia leads it early as Charles Claxton is lighting up the scoreboard early for uh, the, the uh, Georgia Bulldogs. Well, some unsettling news surviving or other surroundings expected to come on the docket in either January or February. We'll be following that story closely for you. Some other college hoop news. Playing guard Kim Lewis will miss the rest of the season as a result of this play against Indiana last Thursday. Ouch. Look at it again, if you can, in slow-mo. Lewis landing off-balance, breaking his left fibula. Arthroscopic surgery revealed no ligament damage. That's a miracle, but Lewis will be on crutches for three months. Wish him all the best. He will be missed, Kim Lewis, for the Green Wave. Seton Hall forward Arturis Karnischewitz listed his day-to-day after this collision with teammate Terry DeHair in a first-round NIT game against Delaware. Karnischewitz, in the bottom right corner of the screen, suffered a slight tear of the medial cruciate ligament. Terry DeHair fortunately walked away from this coll collision, but Karnischewitz is day-to-day. -day. Could have been a lot worse for Seton Hall. Tennessee forward Carlos Groves dismissed from the team earlier this week. Groves suspended by the team earlier in the season by Coach Wade Houston 
were violating team rules, but Carlos Groves, as of now, no longer a Tennessee Vol. And tragic news from the world of college basketball earlier this week. North Carolina State backup forward Anthony Robinson was found dead in his dorm room after he failed to show up for an exhibition game. Lieutenant W.L. Baker, watch commander of the Raleigh City Police Department, said the 22-year-old 6'9 from uh, Havelock, North Carolina, was found by his roommates, a small caliber pistol nearby. It has been ruled a suicide. Anthony Robinson of North Carolina State. Back with more of our coverage of the preseason NIT in a moment. At halftime of the first game of our doubleheader, the Indiana Hoosiers lead the Florida State Seminoles 39-37. to It's a good one. We'll be back with more of our halftime entertainment in a moment. It's an NIT, a refreshing new concept in college hoops. Gets the big teams to play one another rather than the cupcake early schedules that so many of them used to play. And with four of the top 21 teams in the country, I'd have to say it's working beautifully. In case you missed some of the sights and sounds of the earlier round, let's take a look and a listen. It's time to play some hoops. down to four and they're all aiming for that one goal to cut down the nets at Madison Square Garden for the preseason NIT championship and Calvert Chaney and his Indiana Hoosiers are aiming for the goal look at Chaney drive the baseline for two and that's the margin at halftime Indiana 39 Florida State 37 back with the second half in just a few moments stay with us when shopping for toys this Christmas come to the Our holiday weekend feast of hoops continues with the coverage of the Great Alaska Shootout. Friday, our coverage begins at 9.30 Eastern, and then another game at midnight Eastern, 9 p.m. Pacific time. The shootout actually starts tonight in Anchorage at Sullivan Arena. Vanderbilt against UAB, Dayton against Illinois. We'll be back to the Garden in a moment. If you're... ESPN's College Basketball is brought to you by Prudential. In a changing world, one thing remains rock solid. The Prudential. And by Sony Handycam, America's most popular camcorder. One guy who likes to have a lot of fun on the basketball court is Florida State's Bob Sura. We saw that. Two announcers who like to have fun, John Saunders and Dick Vitale. Guys, take it away for the second half. <laughs> well, thank you, Tom, and you're absolutely right. We're having a great time, and why wouldn't we? Look at number 4, 6, 7, and 21. You see them here tonight in the semifinals of the NIT, and right now, Indiana has a two-point lead over Florida State, 39-37. That after leading by 15 points. And Dick Vitale, we really shouldn't be that surprised that Florida State was able to mount the comeback because without question, even though they were struggling offensively, you know they're not going to stop putting the shot up. They're a very spurt-oriented team, and they have such offensive weapons. And the one thing they have is the flexibility and the freedom to shoot the rock when they want to shoot it. Let it fly, baby, is their theme. 
get the good shot, forget about statistics. I mean, take a look right here. Is this great execution? I mean, he's falling out of bounds. He kicks it back out. Sir, it's a swan of 0 for 7. I don't care. I'm letting this baby go from NBA range. Tickle the twine, NBA, nothing but nylon. Look at the stats right here. 38% for Florida State. But look at the free throw lines, John. Unbelievable. Usually Indiana is like 2-1 to one against the opponent. Today it's 2-1 to one Florida State. But Florida State not shooting well. Only 4 for 10. The rebounding is about even for the half. And that really tells a little bit of the story as well. Because early on, Indiana had the edge. Florida State kept hammering the glass and was able to come back. I think an important stat right here is basically, we look at last season in terms of free throw differential. Look at the numbers right now. Indiana, first two games, had a plus 37. They were 79 attempts to only 42 for the opposition in the first two games. Today, they've only been to the line three out of five times. That is not typical Indiana basketball. And certainly some of the indications Although he's down by two, have to be good for Pat Kennedy. Hey, two stars, Bissell and also Sola with four for 17, and you're only down a deuce. Nova travels as he tries to fight his way free of the Florida State defense. Florida State does a good job intimidating on the interior. What looks like easy shots for the opponents really is not when you talk about the presence of Dobart and Edwards around the basket. Reed also gives a presence there at seven feet. Cassell just lets it go. That one was halfway down the hoop before it rattled back out. He just loves to play Sammy Cassell. He's a traveling man. He's been all over Scudder's career. Well, high school, Dunbar. San Jacinto Junior College. Well, then he went to Maine Central Institute prior to go to San Jacinto when he signed with the ball. Reed again with the big hands up in the face of Nova. Sura. Oh, behind the back. The reverse. Oh, oh, baby. Showtime in November. Are you serious? Sura to Sammy. Slick Sammy with the deuce and a reverse. And we are tied at 39. Tom uh, Mees had to jump out of his seat. He's got to like that. They didn't do that down in Delaware. <laughs> we know Tom did. Blocked along the baseline by Dobart as Henderson tried to get the shot. Sura with a nice pass oh. into Edwards who finds Dobart. See, right now, if you're Bobby Knight, you got to think about a timeout. you got to think about a timeout and settle your club a little bit down. In fact, he's calling, almost using like a timeout, a communicating call set structured pattern that he wants here. Florida State's first lead since 5-4. Damon Bailey can't get it. Cassell, Edwards, a great inside. Great inside pass. So there's an example. Sammy Cassell, one against four, the freedom to shoot the ball. That really defies, really, the coaching in terms of, of coaching strategy. So you talk about shot selection, balance, good rebound and position. Florida State out to a 6-0 run to start the second half. And out to a four-point lead. Damon Bailey, interesting statistic. Last year, they lost only seven games. Three of the games they lost, John, to Michigan, Minnesota, and Michigan State. Damon Bailey had zero, had zip. He's had zip thus far tonight, but in fairness to Damon, he only played three minutes in the first half. Indiana tried to catch Florida State sleeping. Zura was quickly out on the break, but they didn't find him. Zura likes to get out on that break. He gets behind the defense really well. Allows the big guys to go inside a rebound. We used to call it cherry picking. That's what I used to like to do. <laughs> Let everybody else do the dirty work and play the defense. Edwards with Henderson on him. Henderson with a nice block. Nover comes up with him and finds Give it up! Give it up and get it back! Should have given it up a little sooner and got it back for the layup, Graham. Henderson gets hammered as he goes up for the jam. Pat Kennedy, one of his great assets. He has great rapport with his athletes. He really has the great personality. The kids love to play for him. There's a little hug. Look at Sam talking. Had to do some teaching. See, right here, he should have given a rock up. See, give it up right now and get it back. He waits. He tries to make the play, but allows the defense to get back. Reed picks up his third personal. Andre Reed, one of those quiet contributors with size on the interior defensively. Yeah. 
happy night, not a happy guy on that sideline. But he says, these are the kind of games I like to play because you get a true indication, strength of your club. That one does softly bounce home. He gets one of the two. I remember four years ago, he got blitzed here. Gave up like 17,000 points against Indiana, against Syracuse in North Carolina. They came back and they won the Big Ten. Sura fights his way in by himself. Edwards the rebound and he is fouled. He's really doing a great job on the offensive boards. One of the reasons that they're staying with him, our fine statistician Marty tells us, he says offensive rebounds, and that's number six for Mr. Edwards. Brian Evans, number 34, comes in for Indiana, replacing Allen Henderson. Oh, look at the change of direction. Little change of direction, splits the defense. Nova doesn't rotate over to close the lane. And there's the offensive rebound. Came out of Miami. I just wonder if Leonard Hamilton had been right there at Miami, if he would have gotten away and went out to Seminole land. Because Leonard Hamilton really is going to start to build a solid program as Knight doing some coaching well, on the sideline. As side we mentioned earlier, his brother didn't get away from Miami, so you have to wonder as well if he would have. Yeah, they would have had a nice little young backcourt with Frazier and also Edwards down there in the Big East. Damon Bailey's got to start to look at the basket and put some points on the board. It's playing to me a little bit tentative. There is now a 1-3-1 trap. Come to the post. Should be some open shots on a baseline against this. Now they rotate. They stay in the zone. They stay in a little trapping zone. I think Indiana gets the high percentage shot against this. Dobard called for the foul as Cheney tried to go around him. You mentioned Damon Bailey. Last year in games that Indiana won, he had 14 points a game, or thereabouts in an average. In games they lost, seven points. And, and you mentioned the times he was shut out. So many accolades coming out of high school. Graham tries to find Evans, or rather Nover. Nover loses it and it gets away. I think good decision right there. Florida State rotating out of the zone, going to the man-to-man, -man, playing them head-to-head, -head, utilizing their athletic ability. Athletic ability, when we talk about it, means good lateral quickness, good up and down speed, excellent jumping ability. Cassell just does it by himself from end to end. He's just a big-time scorer. He's got one advantage on most of these people, John. He's approaching 24 years of age, and that is a big, big plus. Nover turns around with a hand in his face. That was Reed. Edwards. He's a good passer. Looks over the top of the defense. Sarah, he's going to let it fly. He's going to let it fly about six inches short. Dobart is wide open, and he cans it. He's got a nice little jump shot. Gets the excellent look at the basket. Bobby Knight's team needs a spark somehow. It's an eight-point lead for the Seminoles. Bob Knight needs to talk. Indiana had led by as many as 15, but you can see Coach Knight down eight now. Needed the timeout to talk things over. We want to remind you that on Friday, Dick and I will be right back here at Madison Square Garden. The championship game winner of this game against the winner of the second semifinal between Seton Hall and UCLA. In the Great Alaska Shootout semifinals at 9.30 Eastern Time and midnight. I want to say, uh, John, on behalf of all of us, we send our sympathy to Lou Henson's family. He lost his son, Lou Jr., in a car accident. And Lou will be at the Great Alaska Shootout with Illinois. Our hearts go out to Lou and Mary Henson. Absolutely. They're over. The last eight minutes, Indiana's been without a field goal. Florida State in this half, 11 to 1, outscoring Indiana. From down two, five second count on Sam Cassell. And he turns it over. Sammy really likes to take his guys one on one, just like he did in the streets of Baltimore when he played at Dunbar. I have known Sam Cassell since he was about 10 years old. Got a nice personality. Break it in. Cheney is short. He's 0 for 2 in the first five minutes in his half, Talbot. Damon Bailey gets his first deuce. Well, they call that garbage points, but he just has a nose. Always seems to be around the basket. 
has capability to put a lot of points on the board. I think he's got to play a lot more minutes. I mean, I'm not the coach. I'm not certainly a Hall of Famer like Robert Montgomery Knight. But I think they need Damon Bailey's productivity if they're going to win big, 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 typical Indiana-style Final Four, win a Big Ten championship. When he's on the floor, it certainly is another dimension. So we look at some of the other scores. Uh, still exhibition contest being played. The change in the schedule. It's close to December and we're still seeing those scores against the Ukraine national team it seems strange well we saw Minnesota there and they're gonna be really a tough basketball team in fact to my projections John I look at eight teams in the Big Ten I was telling Bobby today at lunch I think there are eight teams in the Big Ten out of the 11 that you can project in the top 30 to top 40 in the nation the only three being Wisconsin Northwestern and Penn State not there but what about Stu Jackson getting Rashad Griffith the seven-footer from King High School Stu Jackson's got some people excited down in Wisconsin. Leary, he can shoot the ball, Leary. Bailey, an excellent passer. They got to get some help for Cheney. He can't do it himself scoring. They cut the lane off for Cheney. Look for Leary looking to spot up and shoot a three. Florida State's got to be aware of his three-point shooting ability. Dumping it down for Calvert Cheney, who was cutting in. The shot was a tough one. Real tough shot. Dovar's really got quick feet defensively. That's not a tough one. Little slam jam, bam, by Mr. Cheney. Damon Bailey with the nice speed after he ran down the loose ball. Damon Bailey knows how to play. Has great feel and understanding for the game. One of Bobby Knight's biggest complaints. He thinks Damon can pick it up intensity-wise a little more. If you're not intense, you're going to see a lot of bench for Bob Knight. Yeah, you become a little BT, bench time. To sell, that's a three-pointer. Oh, three shots. He sure gets, is. He gets three attempts at the basket. That definitely was contact on Sam. Leary hits him, and I want to tell you, right before then, Sam Cassell, as he was dribbling the basketball, was talking to Todd Leary. Was letting him know, you can't guard me. <laughs> that may have gotten Leary a little bit closer to him after he put up the three-pointer. They're trying to clean that up in terms, they call it bench decorum. They call it in terms of showboating. They want to get rid of some of that. Some of that's done in good taste. I that's like it. Part, that's just part of the game. Well, as long as it's done in good taste. Oh, yeah. I mean, as long as you don't have a bunch of profanity streaming As long as you out. don't say anything about anybody's mother, you're okay. <laughs> just have some fun out there. Sell now with 12 points. Trying to push the lead up to seven. The three goes to the line for the trifecta. San Jacinto had quite a junior college team when they had him. They had Brian Salier on that team playing at Oklahoma. Really comes quietly. Nobody's talking Oklahoma in the big eight. Watch out for Tuck. He's reloading down there. He's got Webster back, Evans back, Salier. Eight-point Florida State lead. Bailey tries to take it to the baseline and does manage to draw a foul. They clear out the side for Damon. Damon really does an excellent job of driving to the goal. He's looking really to create situations for his teammates as well as trying to convert and score. A lot of pressure on this kid, John. Came out of high school, was written up in the seventh and eighth grade in Sports Illustrated. And from the day he stepped on that campus, people were expecting instant superstardom. And that is surprising to see a free throw like that from Damon Bailey. It looked like mine. I had a few <laughs> bricks in here. People were screaming out today, working here. It was just myself, quiet arena. Indiana didn't come to their shoot around at 11. Oh, I didn't even look close on those two free throws. Tip back up. And a foul underneath will head the other way. David had no rotation at all and touch at all on those two free throws. Too much palm on a basketball. Indiana struggling at the free throw line. That's not typical of Indiana. Usually a very good, productive team on a free throw line. The Sal so quick underneath, stopped once. But not quite. He's got some great offensive skills. He really does. They play without a true point guard. But really, they have such great scoring ability out of Sora and also out of Cassell. 11 points for Sam. Lock up. Five seconds. Five seconds down. That's a violation. Violation. I said jump ball. I'm thinking years ago it would have been jump ball. They got rid of that rule. And deservedly so because it used to penalize the defense. 
Byron Evans comes in for Andre Reed. Ten point lead for Florida State. And the basketball. That ACC is going to have quite a race. Carolina certainly is going to be a good basketball team. We know how good Duke's going to be. Hey, Virginia, Wake Forest, and Georgia Tech will be there as well. The cell just fires it up with a Sura going up for the rebound. Oh, nice look. Nice look. Very unselfish by Sura. The Woodsbury Super. He dumps it off. He says, move aside, Rocket. I'm the new star in Woodsbury. Rocket is male, also from there. A little block underneath. Indiana's not, a, not able to make anything happen with their defense in creating little layups by forcing turnovers against the, the guards. Sura with a long rebound. This is six, three and a half. And there's the little tough. Look at a good vision. And he turns, the no-look pass. I think you're going to see a lot of three-guard offense out of Florida State when Charlie Ward comes. And you'll see Sura playing a lot on the wing with Sammy Cassell now going into the scorer's role completely at the second guard slot. We talked with uh, Pat Kennedy yesterday. He cannot wait for Charlie Ward to come back. As good as his game looks right now, they had the Florida State quarterback. Hey, you talk about a kid they can't wait to get next year. They're all red and raving. James Collins coming in to score from out of Jacksonville from Florida State of guard who replaced Sammy Cassell. They think he could be an instant star. And Indiana, what a great recruiting class. In fact, if you had to rate the top five classes signing early, Indiana, Kansas, and Duke would be right there. Look at that good-looking side. Great pass by Cassell. It's run down. It's still Florida State basketball. In fact, Bobby Knight's nice changed his philosophy a little bit of recruiting. He used to really be Indiana, Ohio, and Michigan-oriented. He's going all over the country. He signed three kids from California. Pat Graham, number 33, in for Indiana. Shooter. Pat Graham's a guy that looks to get free for that jump shot. Cancel. Trying for Derek Carroll. Dobart on the baseline. Well, look at Sura follow. Cassell just turns around, fires it up. Indiana not blocking out, not really doing what they've caught the fourth phase of their defense. Nice job by Bailey to find Greg Graham. Good execution in transition off the miss, but they're really getting beaten on the glass. Not blocking out, got to find somebody. Florida State's got live legs. Sura never really had control of that ball. Here's the guy that's got to get involved, right there, Henderson. Good defensive effort. What a tremendous hustle by Sam Cassell to get back on Allen Henderson. It's 56-48. We'll return in a moment. We're going to take a look right here how Indiana picks up their dribble, John. And, but the key is closing off your man. They shut down everybody else. We watch him right here. There's a good defensive pressure right here on Graham. Now he's going to dump it. There it is now. They're going to lock him up. Freeze it. Freeze it. See, now right now, he has nobody to pass for. Florida State does a super job denying everybody on the floor. They're really working hard. Look at the denial by Sarah. He says, no, you can't give it up. You can't give it up. We're going to get the turnover. 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 Yes, there it is. Turnover City. And the reaction. I can't wait. I mean, basketball already. This is unbelievable. Thanksgiving holiday. Macy's parade tomorrow. Are you in that? They, I understand they have a new float. It looks just like you. Ooh. As Pat Graham got a good look at the basket. He looks a little heavier, Pat Graham, to me. Nice shot by Greg Graham on defense. Sammy wants a foul. He says, Joe Bingo, please, come on now. He's banging me. I'm a star. He can't do that. Last 15 minutes, Henderson has not been involved in the offense. They got to get Allen Henderson involved. They're becoming one-dimensional right now. Calvert Chaney time. And they had Derek Carroll on him. Carroll, a freshman. He just schooled him. South Carolina kid. They really expect big things from him. The slasher, quick player. Dobar gets the return. Wells with a nice follow. Indiana really getting beaten to the glass. Really on the second shot. Indiana likes to catch the ball, get a triple threat position, look down inside. 
Carroll called for that foul. Now we talked about one of the elements to a good team defense in the Anna style is blocking out. Look at right there. Wells goes to a direct lane to the basket. Nobody lays a body on him. You're a defensive player. You've got to find your man. Look at the offensive rebound. 16 to 9. That means you're playing aggressive basketball. One of the keys to playing aggressive basketball, forcing the turnover, steals, offensive rebounding, block shots. Edwards with seven of those offensive boards. Pat Graham, that's what he does best. Stroke the jump shot. That's why he was Mr. Basketball. Sat last year out, lit shirt, foot surgery. Lead is now down to six. Good defense by Graham. Good denial. Sura says to Giselle, put some pepper on that thing. Get it in there. In the end, the beat goes on and on, though. Next year, they're bringing Richard Mandel, seven foot from out of California. Bobby Egger, 6'10". They're doubling up inside. Sura lets it fly and stands it. He's just a big-time scorer. ACC Rookie of the Year. Beat out some quality people. Beat out James Forrest for that award. Georgia Tech's final. Graham is free, and that's a three-pointer for the Hoosiers. Can't allow him to get a good look at the basket. You've got to be aware. Scouting report, evaluation. He comes on the floor. He's got to talk. Got to communicate to his teammate. He can shoot the ball. Match up. Get in his face. This is a big-time game, John, for this early in the season. Nice steal by Graham. This is Bowen Howley's field, baby. This is big time. And there's a real heavyweight. Welcome back to Madison Square Garden, everyone. John Saunders along with Dick Vitale. Those of you just joining us now, we have a great one in game number one of the semifinals of the NIT. Indiana led big early in this game, and right now, Florida State has a five-point lead after getting up by ten. Florida State playing good, solid team, man-to-man -man defense. Indiana usually excels in a half-court offensive attack. Kenny from the baseline. You talk about player of the year this year. You have to think about Allen Houston who can smoke it at Tennessee. You look at the senior class, you got to talk about this guy. Certainly Bob Hurley down too. What will hurt Houston is the fact that they won't win as big as the Indiana kids and the Duke kids. Kenny now with 25 points. He closes it to three. Some other Boston will make a run for that too. Mashburn of Kentucky. There's the turnover. Cassell loses it. Allen Henderson. Nice pass. Nice pass. pass. That won't fall. And Sura. Katie's He's got a trailer. Defense. He's got the and. trailer. He should have kicked it back to the trailer. He tried to take Chaney a little pride, a little macho time. He says, hey, come on, Chaney. Try to defend me. And he had a slow and defensive transition getting back. Janey picks up the loose one and won't go. They Edwards with the rebound. They're just going exclusively right now to Calvert Chaney. They got to get a little help for him. Cassell trying to fight his way to the hole. Allen Henderson has had that big game against Tulane. Really has not been able to touch the ball offensively here in the second half. And it's showing as the Hoosiers trail by five. <laughs> The Beatles are coming. But this time you'll actually be able to hear them. See a different Beatles special every evening during the eight days a week Beatles Festival on the Disney Channel free preview, November 29th through December 6th. The award-winning Mitsubishi 3000 GT. The stunning Mitsubishi Eclipse for 1993. Nothing livens up a family like a little sibling rivalry. The Eclipse from Mitsubishi. The word is getting around. Come in and see the Eclipse at your Houston area Mitsubishi Motors dealer. Heisman hopefuls, Garrison Hurst of Georgia, Gino Toretta of number one Miami, and Marshall Falk of San Diego State, all on Saturday. College football on ESPN in a class by itself. 
pick up the phone for the latest sports news from ESPN anytime, day or night. Florida State Seminoles on the warpath, if you will. Up 62 to 57 over the Indiana Hoosiers with just about seven and a half to go. I wonder if Burt Reynolds is watching. I wonder if Burt Reynolds is watching. And what about his close? He ripped Miami left and right. Unbelievable, Burt. Take it easy on Miami. The way it looks, he doesn't just watch. He calls the game as well. He's one of my favorite actors. I wish I had his looks. I, wow, I'd be a TV star if I looked that good. Mm, I don't think so. <laughs> Indiana's got to come up with a good defensive stop right here. What confidence Sammy Cassell and also Sora play with. They play with such confidence. Here's Hans now giving Sora a rest. Tries oh, to find it. Edwards. Good defensive play by Henderson. Got the stop they want to Give it up and get it back. Get it to your shooter. Cheney with the disc to Pat Graham and Cassell back on defense. Very unselfish, Calvert. Right there, if I'm Calvert Cheney, I'm looking at the basket for the 15-footer and shooting the rock. Hands goes to the bench now as Bob Sura checks back in. Just wanted to get him a little rest on that sideline. Ty Kennedy's got an excellent staff. Kenny Williamson from out of New York City. Worked with him over at Iona. Also, Tom Carlson does a solid job. Here we go. They made some noise right away in that ACC, winning on a road like they did. Six wins on the road. Not been done by a first-year team in the ACC before. Reynolds pulls it back out. Graham to the baseline. Some help there, but he still manages to muscle it in. Excellent drive by Pat Graham, who's really a standstill shooter, but shows that he's also worked on taking the ball to the basket. Love the defensive stance and presence of Chris Reynolds. You talk about all defense, you better put him out there with Derek Phelps of, uh, down at uh, Carolina. That's Edwards for three, a little long. Wells, nice job with the rebound. Underneath the Sura, out of bounds was Pat Graham as he went for the ball. The reason Florida State's got the lead really has been the explosiveness of their guards and their ability to shoot the ball, make the big shot, even though they're not shooting well, and also their offensive rebounding, aggressiveness, really being aggressive, attacking the glass. Six and a half minutes left here. Pat Graham looked like he took an elbow to the eye. He maybe have a little cut. Well, if he has a cut, remember the new rule now in college basketball. Any kind of bleed, he's got to come out of the game, get medical attention before he can come back on the floor. And they could use him, too. He has seven of their last nine points. As we look at the rules for cuts and bleeding, player must be removed right away, treated, cannot return until he has the medical clearance. Now, even if you get blood on your uniform or your shoes, it must be treated with the solution, or they must change the uniform. And obviously that's all related to the AIDS situation. Looks though here as though maybe he's got something in his eye. Might be a contact problem. Because if he was cut, he should be on the bench and replaced by a player. He just needs a lot of game time. Has not had the chance to play a lot of game action due to his injury. But had a tremendous high school career. Anytime you miss the basketball in Indiana, those kids start playing from day one, dreaming and chasing that dream to be a hoopster. They got a foul right here on the right inbound on Henderson. Ball. A little hole. And Henderson looks like uh, he's not quite sure what he did. Remember the rules? 101 goes into effect on the seventh. You start to shoot the bonus to two on the tenth. Bilbar turns around on top of Cheney, but he's way too long. go to Henderson down in this possession. Get him involved. Damon Bailey fires up a three. Good hustle, hustle on Cheney. Everybody going for it. 
possession arrow is going to Florida State. But that's just great to see a superstar, to see a quality player, a hustle, hustle, scrap, scrape his knees. I mean, that's the kind of John Madden kind of player. He'd love number 40. Another guy that'll be right in the run in terms of player of the year. You got to talk about Jamal Mashburn down in Kentucky. You got a real thin class this year in that senior group. We talked about the names that jump at you right now. Cheney, Hurley, Houston, Terry Terry DeHair, Douglas Edwards. But really, when you think about it, there'll be some underclassmen who'll join that NBA draft. But Jamal Mashburn, in fact, Rick Pitino said, I would be very surprised, basically, if it doesn't go, if he has a great, great year. In fact, he doesn't buy it to go. Edwards to Dobar, back out to Sura, that's a three-pointer. It won't go, and underneath is Allen Henderson. They had excellent execution out of the post play there, a little split off the post. Bailey is stripped by Cassell. Wells goes after it, but it finally goes out of bounds and will return to Indiana. Seen a lot of great hustling in this game. Yeah, a lot of scrapping. We got a lot of pride. You got two quality teams, two top ten teams in America hooking up in New York City. Anytime you play for a tournament championship or a tournament trophy, people really you know gonna come and respond. First commandment of competition, thou shalt play hard. Sam Cassell, nice job by Sir to chase that down. That was on its way out of bounds. Offensive foul. Offensive. That's one of the points of emphasis. Do not allow the offensive player to get the advantage, utilizing what they call the swim stroke to try and get possession inside. You don't allow that to happen. Now we're going to watch the post inside. There's Cheney, and there's the hold off and a little push by Edwards. Throwing him out of the way. Good call by Joe Mingo. And we're into the bonus now as Indiana will go to the line for one and one from here until 10, and then it'll be two for the rest of the way. This is where really Indiana usually succeeds. Bobby Knight usually does a solid job of Pat Kennedy. I'm sure as he's talking to Kenny Williams, is aware that his clubs really, the Generals teams really have won a lot of games in the last five minutes when it's winning time. Free throw shooting being one of the reasons, making the extra pass. I mean, he's not close. He's over three on a free throw line. And that is a big surprise. He's just not really smooth right there on his rotation. Cheney for a closer look. Great dish down to Pat Graham. And from there, he's not going to miss. Pat Graham with the good hands to make that catch. But what a look by Cheney. Think about what Cheney's done here today. He's dove on the floor for loose balls. He made the open jump shot. He's exploded in transition. He shows he can pass the ball. He's going to be an excellent wing player. On the next level, there's a good pass. Pat Graham giving him a lot of productivity off the bench, got earning some PT playing time. Nine of the last 11 Hoosier points make it 10 of the last 12. See that nice rotation, back spin, that's what we're talking about, rotation. Andre Reed comes into the game, replacing Byron Wells. Indiana was down eight. This game has been a game of swinging spurts, really. You had early in this game, you believe this or not? Indiana jumped out by 15. They were out by 15. Florida State had a 12-point lead. And right now, we are tied at 62 apiece. We take a look at what will happen next. It'll be UCLA and Seton Hall getting the winner of this game. And right now, after playing the first half in 15 minutes or just there about here of the second half, you know, it's we're tied. It's something about wearing that Indiana, you know, Indiana uniform. Expectations galore. Almost like Notre Dame in football, Miami in football. Every time you play, people are expecting you to win. And people play at another level against you. They get so fired up. Cassell jacks up the three. No good. Long rebound. Chased down by Chris Reynolds. Shot selection could be the key and the difference in this game down the stretch. To the baseline is Cheney. Six times. Give the Hoosiers the lead again. He's awesome, baby. I mean, he is flat out awesome. You gotta love him, Big John. Stop smiling at me here. <laughs> I'm loving being here watching this. Serve to the baseline. He's blocked by Henderson. Edwards gets it back, and again, they just put the shot up right away. They're really relying on a second and third shot. Shot selection in the last two possessions. Edge, you had to give the edge. Has to go to Indiana. 
Here's Calvert Kidd, a little baseline drive. I mean, he strips the defensive player. Nobody's going to get over. He hangs. He floats. He counts it. Came out of Evansville, Indiana. In fact, he was not their big-time recruit when he came out of high school. It was Pat Graham, player of the year, Lawrence Wunderberg, Indiana on a 26 run the last eight ten. Andre Reed, the big guy, converts. And get it back to a tie again. Got to like Pat Kennedy's contagious personality. He's one of those quiet players. Big guy, but really takes a real good... I mean, he's done a solid job defensively inside on Henderson. Don't hear his name mentioned a great deal. Now, here's Indiana. Trying to get great execution out of their half-court game. Four passes, little curl move into the lane. And Greg Graham gets the foul. You win a lot of basketball games, John. They have four basic punches to their game in Fort Indiana basketball. Number one, shot selection. Always have discipline and shot selection. Number two, another constant is make the extra pass and get us to the free throw line. Number three, consistent team defense. And the fourth, basically, when you talk about Indiana, I mean, I really look at their cross. They really, they take all those phases and do exceptionally well. Is the fourth one, is thou shalt play hard. I mean, every time Indiana plays, you know one thing. They're going to get a maximum effort. Because if they don't, you don't care if it's Cheney or Bailey, they become assistant coaches. They sit next to them on the sidelines. Graham with his tenth point of the game. Indiana with the lead with just under four minutes to go. Now wait a minute. Polaroid introduces new party fill. You know you make me wanna grab Polaroid and you throw your hands up and share a smile now. We're all together now. We're all jumping now. Nothing picks up a party like new Polaroid party film with colorful new borders. So grab some new party film and... A recent university study confirmed something that has millions of asthma sufferers breathing easier. Clinical tests showed primatine tablets help keep asthma sufferers breathing freely for hours. Primatine tablets with the asthma reliever doctors recommend. This is the temple of flight. Shrine of the enlightened basketball mind. Come experience ball mastery. Meditate that. But master, what if we behave badly? You go to Detroit. If you want a beer that drinks easy like a light and has real draft taste, why not make a change for the better? Refreshingly different, but dry. I know we listened to him at the lunch just today. So many people don't realize how much of what he says is just to, to have fun with people. Well, you know, he's a master psychologist, always liking to put people on. I can tell you this, John, I don't think I've ever gotten a phone call from him where he ever calls it, hi, Dick, how you doing? It's always like, okay, you got 30 seconds, and it's my dime, so start talking, because the clock is running, you're off. I mean, that's just part of his way, always looking to put you on the defensive. And he was playing with people there, even though he was really going to make my whole wacko team. Looking to put Florida State on the defensive as well. Look at Reed. Reed, Reed nice follow, but he missed. In there again. It's on the rim. Look at Gobard go after it. Florida State really staying up on a glass. Live leagues. Climbing and climbing and climbing. Whoever loses this game, put it down. Win or lose. These teams are winning 24, 25 games. These are two big-time clubs. There's Reed working the glass, but he bricks that one right there. But there's the offensive rebound. Sammy comes off the weak side, and they keep it alive. It's nice to have fourth and fifth guys in your lineup like Dobard and Reed. Give you great size, shot blocking ability, good rebounding presence. Dobard quick feet inside, good defensive player. And the game is tied once again. 
We have a good one. And I see semifinals, two heavyweights going head to head. Here we go. Two one two press. What are reasons they try to get you out of a rhythm with that press? How they fall back man to man as opposed to the zone like they did last year. Remember their last two losses the last two years to close out their season. Florida State lost to Indiana in the NCAA tournament. Sura gets out on Pat Graham before he can jack it up. He's their number one option right here, Mr. Cheney. Shot clock under 10. Look for Graham. Oh, take three of his man. Great shot by Dobar to block that. Not the guy that Bobby Knight wanted to shoot the basketball right there. I wouldn't be surprised if he makes a change. I mean, that's not the guy you want to shoot the rock. He had right there Reynolds, Graham, clear into the corner. Sura is open, rattles in, but won't roll home. I mean, it was right there for Sura. There was no doubt he was going to shoot the rock right there. This guy here can shoot the ball. He's got to get open. Graham. Sura, three for 18 on the day, coming off of 34 against Iowa State. Shaney gets three men in the air. And he walked. Excellent ball by the official. He lifted his pivot foot. That's about the first mistake he's made all day. You got to give him that after the type of game he's having. You know, it's amazing as you talk about the numbers of Sura having a horrible night shooting the basketball. But it hasn't stopped him from that looks. Looking at the basket. I mean, he's just, he could care less about those numbers. I mean, he's going to let it fly. And he's going to have games where he goes 12 for 15. Approaching two minutes to go, and we are tied. Isolating champ, nice dish. Sura backs out. He's going to let it fly. Game. He is hammered by Pat Graham. Not a good free throw shooter. Shot about 60% last year, Sura. They say he's really been working on that part of his game, knowing that he's going to go to the free throw line a great deal with his slashing ability and his quickness. And now with under two minutes left, he can regain the lead. Sura three for six at the line in this game. It's so great to see kids that did come out with the great ratings, the superstar ratings out of high school, even though he was an excellent player and a legend in his area. Shot that one well. Best player from that area since David Popson. Remember Popson from down in North Carolina? Carolina? Played in the NBA. He looked good shooting him there down the stretch. So forget about that 60% from last year. Get them when they count. Ask for Neil Robinson about that. 2-1-2 two, two press. Get to the wing. Bring the ball to the middle. Get them out of that screening game. Now they're back into it. Bailey tries to find a baseline. Reed cuts it off. Nice job by Reed. Just to bring it back out. Good defensive presence by Reed on the inside. Oh, nice, nice look. Pass. Nice look by Calvert Shady. He was one step ahead. The one thing about Indiana players, I often talk about it. They really don't react, they anticipate. Calvert Cheney anticipated that cut and had the awareness of dumping that ball on the inside. Read his fourth personal foul. Reed's going to steal him off to the baseline. He's going to spin to the lane. There's Reed. He says, no, you're not getting the baseline. This is double up. Now, Cheney recognizes his teammate's double. He steps out. Now he's going to get the ball right here. He's going to stick it out to Cheney. And then they're going to get back into the raw offensive set. Pat Graham now has a chance to tie He's got the perfect stroke, and it doesn't go there. Could be a little fatigue. Hasn't played a lot of minutes. He's got a picture-perfect stroke. This kid right here on the line. Remember, you shoot a free throw with those legs. Picks are perfect, but two for four on today. Yeah, he's really got that nice follow through. Indiana, nine for 17 from the free throw line. That's not their trade line. Right here, Pat Kennedy's team's got to get a good look at the basket. Third to Edwards. That was a good interior passer, probably the finest interior passer for a big player in the country. Down in the boxes, if you double up on him, he'll find the open man. Cassell along with his jumper at the end. Oh, Pat Graham with an easy kick. Oh, bad play by Sammy Cassell. Bad play in many ways. Number one, John, he lets the jumper fly, and he doesn't rotate back in defense. So they have no defensive balance. Graham recognizes, sneaks out of the pack, and gets the layup. Pat Graham has been a big plus off the bench. 
and Graham was very upset at the foul as well. See, here it is. He gets free. Now here comes the defense. He's going to go to the goal. Oh, it is. oh wow. That's got to be intentional right there from behind, John. Clip the legs out. We'll return to a one-point game. Indiana's lead is one as Pat Graham will go to the line to try and convert a three-point play. We want to remind everybody, Sunday night football on ESPN from the AFC West, the Los Angeles Raiders and the San Diego Chargers join Mike Patrick and Joe Spiesman this week at 8 o'clock Eastern. That's following NFL prime time. You can see the standings. Very important game as we close in towards the playoffs. Pat Graham, what a job he has done. In the last nine minutes, he has put 13 points on the board. What productivity off the bench. Last year, they got that kind of scoring out of Greg Graham. He was like one of the premier six men of basketball. There's Billy Parcells, Mike Francesa to his left. Bill Parcells, as I said, was a big scout for Bobby Knight. Worked together down at West Point when he was coaching football at West Point as an assistant. Florida State now with one timeout remaining. Indiana with three. There's blood on the jersey of Pat Graham. At least it looks like blood. If that's blood, isn't it supposed, it's to, be supposed taken to be taken off? That's interesting. 14 big points for Graham. And a two-point Indiana lead. Under a minute now. Roy Knobs, Indiana's got to be really happy with Graham. Boy Central High School Super was just a basketball. What a performance. There's a defensive presence. Bobby Knight now working the offense and defense, going to make the substitution, bring Bailey on the floor. See, he knows Reynolds is the defensive stopper. You talk about my old Rambo team, you're going to play Reynolds, take Reynolds out of the game, and now he brings in Bailey for offense. Allen Henderson forced that turnover. Look at the clock right now, they're going to try to spread the court. Bailey's the guy you might want to foul. I mean, he's been Brick City, 0 for 3 on that line. Can't put a hand on him, Bob. Let's spread the court. There's a double up. Turn over they force and Florida State gets it as Graham can't hang on to it. And Florida State calls it timeout with 22 seconds. That's their last timeout for Florida State. Florida State, no field goals in the last seven minutes and 40 seconds. Indiana locked up defensively, but they better lock up right now. Knowing the Florida State kicks. And the freedom they have. Don't be shocked if a guy like Silver or Cassell, even though the rule says, get the high percentage shot, let's one fly for three-point land and knocks it down. Would not be surprised There's at a, all. Did a double up, and now they're going to close off everybody else, and he can't find anyone. He can't find anyone. Now they triple team him. There's the ball, baby, in Florida State. The Seminoles have it. What a great way to kick off the semifinals here in the NIT. You're smiling. You're having a blast of your life. You could not ask for anything better than this. Two teams ranked in the top ten. Coming down in the final 22 seconds of a two-point game. We, hey, we could see overtime. Oh, there's no question in this possession right now. See if you're Pat Kennedy right now in designing your play. During these timeouts, there's a lot of strategy taking place. You make your players aware of the clock. You make them aware of the score. You make them aware of who you want to shoot the ball, who to defend. Right now, if you're Pat Kennedy, you don't want to take it down, though, to the last second. You want to get that good shot with maybe six, seven, eight seconds so they have a chance if they come down with the rebound foul and maybe get the ball back again. You're already working double time. Bob Knight gets to watch the second game. You do not. Florida State and Indiana falling. That'll be UCLA and Seton Hall. That's my alma mater playing against the UCLA Bruins. So if we get overtime, boy, are you going to pick up a big check this week? Wow, I'd like to work for it. Here we go now. They spread the court. Locking up defense. The clock winding down. So they're having a bad night shooting it. They're going to go there. We're down in the box, baby. Okay. Fly. There it is. Catch it. They let too much time on that clock run. Indiana allowed that clock to run. Should have got the timeout a little quicker. It looked 
like Cheney did try and get it right away. As soon as he got the ball before it was even out of bounds, he started to signal for the timeout. Perfect execution. That was a call design number one option by Pat Kennedy. During that timeout, their first option was to go to Edwards down in the box. Not only to look at the goal, but if a double team came his way, find the open man. And there's Edwards. He was a super in high school. Rated second best to Mr. Anderson. He knocks it down big time style right here in the Big Apple, baby, in Madison Square Garden. And their first field goal in eight minutes for Whoa. Florida State ties the game. Well, what a time to get it. The big fella converts. Now, here's Indiana. Remember this. The clock does not start until the ball touches the hand of a player. You know what rule I'd love to see converted to the collegiate game? The NBA rule where in the last two minutes you have a choice and option where to inbound the ball. It puts a lot more fun into the game. More coaching decisions have to be made. What about stopping the clock at when the ball goes through the hoop? You mean at the end of the game? At the end of the game. Minutes, yes. And that's a good one, too. It eliminates all those wild timeouts. I mean, those crazy uh, timeouts that we see one after another. I mean, is this fun city or what? The Big Apple. I mean, this is fun. Uh, trying to get us on TV. I can't believe it. I'm on TV. You're on TV an awful lot well, at this time of year. But when you have games like this, nobody is complaining about it. I mean, this is, is more than you could hope for. Three and a half seconds left. Ties at 69 apiece. I wonder what our guy Jimmy V's doing back home. Is he screaming he's and jumping? And Absolutely, you know he is. He had a great time. He played a little golf. Should I tell you the score? I shouldn't tell you the score on a TPC golf course, should I? The only number I remember you talking about when you talked about Jim playing golf was how much it cost you to get oh, him on the court. On. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't like to give up the cash, you know. I gave it up today at lunch. Now, here it is right now. They're going to put pressure on the guy throwing it down. I think that's a good decision. Bob, the story doesn't get a good look for a baseball pass. Runs the clock down. Hands up. Good defense. I mean, that's a prayer. That's a total prayer. We're going OT. You've got to be impressed by the job Florida State did there. With three seconds left, and that's the best shot Indiana could get. I like that defensive decision to bother the guy throwing the ball out of bounds. Remember, we had the Kentucky-Duke game where they threw the ball down to the court, and Leighton made that catch, and everybody else froze because they were afraid to foul, and he had that good look. Here it is. They got right up on the baseline. We'll be back with overtime after this. We have played 40 minutes, and we are still tied at 69 apiece. You know, incredible for, like we say, this early in the season, but the one key thing here for both these clubs, as opposed to UCLA in the next game, when you talk about not having a whole lot of practice time with the start on November 1st, both these teams are very experienced basketball teams, Indiana and Florida State. They returned such a solid nucleus. Indiana only lost Eric Anderson, who's now a 12th man here in New York with the New York Knicks. It's better being the 12th man in the NBA than it is to be the first man in the CBA. And if you don't believe it, look at your check on a 15 to 30. Yes, right. But they lost Meeks as well, a good little point guard who gave him a lot of positive minutes. Every foul, keep in mind, now will be a two-shot for each team. We're over the 10. Overtime always starts with a jump ball. The start of a game starts with the jump ball. Overtime starts with the jump ball. You get one more timeout here in the overtime. Five minutes extra is the play time. Indiana now with three timeouts. Florida State gets one after getting it back. And Florida State controls it. Dovar taps it back to Edwards. Alan Henderson really been a non-factor scoring-wise in the second half. He's too talented. Tries to do it himself. Pop three. Edwards can't get it. Nice job to knock it back out to Sura, though. That was really tough to handle in that post. Edwards again rattles in and out. And Pat Graham comes away with it. Pat Graham's really been a positive force off that bench. They're going with Bailey for offense right now here in the overtime rather than Reynolds. Damon Bailey open for the shot offline. You could see from the time he released it. He just doesn't seem to have that confident delivery, especially even on a free throw line where he threw up those three bricks. Cassell flips it fly and has it. Little one-on-one -on -one basketball. He's been doing that all his life in the streets of Baltimore. Out the main central institute where he played 
Well, that's just produced a lot of players. Johnny Rhodes, remember that name? He's going to be a big star. Apparently, yeah. 30 last night in an exhibition game. He played at Maine Central. Anderson fights through the lane, but it's an offensive foul. You could see that coming. It was almost telegraphed. Alley gets in a one-on-one -on -one maneuver. But he really, you can see the defense ready to rotate over. There goes Henderson to the goal. Now here comes Edwards. He comes right over. He's planted. Defensive player starts in legal defensive position by, oh, this is double dribble. By having both feet planted to the ground. Henderson, no field goal, and he has one point in the last 27 minutes of play. Had a big game against Tulane. and asked Perry Clark. Had big, big numbers. 28 points, I believe, against Tulane. I like that kid Reed down at Tulane. What can he read from life? Execution right now, Indiana trying to execute. High percentage screen, of course, the lane horizontal screen. But Edwards now playing Cheney. Nice pass underneath the Bailey. He has those three hands in his face. Henderson with the follow. Nice tip by Allen. Good extension. He's got the long reach, good fingertips. And we're rotating a lot of bodies on Cheney. I mean, just a, like that high screen. There's the high screen. Peter steps out as a release man. Edwards can't get it. Bounces free. Dobart quickly on Henderson. He finds his way out of trouble. Indiana playing a little bit more patient now on the offensive end. The line a little bit more on half court execution. They got, they got Edwards now. Double it up on Cheney. Doesn't matter. He's so quick. Wells with a good rebound after the miss by Cheney. Ted Wells has gotten better and better from last year. 6'10 player. Good look at the basket. 15, as you said earlier, against Siena. Played very well defensively in this contest. Trying to get right here a little spread to court. Take advantage of his one-on-one -on -one ability. Oh, Giselle throws it up underhanded. It won't go, and then he foul. commits a foul. And he can't lose his cool right now. Bench the court. You don't need AT. You might just have an official ready to plus. Apply the rule. Got to calm down, Sam. Pep's trying to calm him down. He's gone. He's gone. That's number five. But go out quietly, Sam. Sudden Sam put 18 on a board. Didn't have a good day shooting the rock. That is going to be tough, losing Sam Cassell. He's got to go with a freshman now, a kid from Indiana who they didn't recruit. Scott Shepard, does he come back? I mean, this is a story like Hoosiers. Does he come back now and haunt the school that, as a youngster, he used to dream of maybe playing, where his uncle went, Billy. No, his uncle was, was Dave. His dad was Billy, was Mr. Basketball. That family's got a rich tradition there in the state of Indiana, Carmel, Indiana. We're writing scripts for Hollywood now as oh, Reynolds comes back in. If he ever would have hit a jumper to win this at the buzzer, you talk about a script. I could see the Indianapolis papers, 295 of the boys down there. Bob and Tom and company talking about it like you can't believe. They got a, you can see these guys that host the radio show out in Indiana. 295, you ever heard of them? Oh, you did? You're not Absolutely. Yes. Oh, they are unbelievable. Henderson struggling at the line now, one for four. Well, Henderson struggling on the line. What about Bailey? Bailey's 0 for uh, 3, I believe. Graham struggled up there as well, Pat Graham. Gets the second one to give Indiana a one-point lead. Now, let's see if Shepard can handle this kind of pressure. He's not a super quick kid. Came to school a little bit heavy, but he's a good ball hammer and a good shooter. What a time to get indoctrinated. Overtime game. The baseline. Shepard says, hey, I'll just get it to my guys do it. They were hanging around the hotel lobby yesterday. I had a chance to wrap with both guys in the lobby at the Marriott. Cheney oh. Free has to come back out with it to Chris Reynolds. Do they play off Reynolds? They know Reynolds is not going to look at the basket, but he really has two basic roles. One, to defend and stop the progress of the ball, and two, to key the initial look to the offense. Well, here's Shepard right now. He, he knows he really doesn't have to guard Reynolds. There he's trying to run that little curl move, chaining inside, but he gets bumped over the top by Edwards. Chaney will go to the line. The chance to put it back to a one-point Indiana lead if he can hit both. 28 points now for Calvert Cheney. What a tremendous what? career he's had. Really a super career. 
won 56 games the last two years of his career. Scores in a system, scores in a situation where he's sitting on a bench a little bit, but he doesn't do things the right way. Can't become the all-time leading scorer in Indiana this year. I guarantee Shepard didn't see defense in high school like he's going to see here out of Reynolds. Oh, nice oh. move by Edwards, but too strong off the glass. Well saved to back out to Sarah. Excellent move by Doug Edwards, but doesn't convert. Sura, a little too strong with it. Can he get fouled? Edwards fouls him. You can almost strike the field, though it's a one-point game. That a little frustration setting in a little bit with Florida State and some of the fouling down here late in the game to the overtime. Calvert Cheney will go back to the line. A minute, two seconds left. Edwards is now fouled out of the game. So Pat Kennedy loses his point guard in Sam Cassell. Now his big-time gun on the blocks. Lose a lot, of, a lot of experience inside outside act you lose a guy like this with his presence on a perimeter you lose an inside player it's tough to win basketball games you got two guys sitting next to you as an assistant coach i mean he's got enough assistant coaches he doesn't need them as assistants and andre reed will come in pat coaches his heart out on that sideline he has such a love for what he's doing i think anybody that has i've heard lou holt speak about this john when you have a passion and a love for what you're doing, I mean, you get compensated for what you're doing. I mean, what greater way, what greater job to have? He's the guy you don't want to put on that line. I mean, this guy here is like, especially late in the game, a little smooth as can be. Five for five now from the strike. He's going to be playing in the arena throughout his career in the future because there's no question he's going to play at the next level. It hits for six, but a three-point lead for Indiana. I'm not as far to be with the Knicks, but he'll be coming here with whoever he's playing with. Now, here's Shepard now. Here's the story of the story. Indiana, schoolboy super. Playing against the Hoosiers. Sura, that's a three-pointer. No good. Sura struggling, shooting the rock. Let's see if they spread the court right now. Do they smell the final? The Hoosiers. The one negative losing here is you've got to play a consolation. Here's a reach-in. 37 seconds now. Indiana up by three. Not much difference between these two heavyweights, John. Not much difference at all. And remember, we didn't see Florida State full cast. Chuck Rams out now. Well, he's going to be out all year, so I guess we can't talk about him, but they will get Charlie Ward after the uh, bowl game. Impressed with both teams, though, ability to come back after being down pretty big. Yeah, both clubs had a bounce back, as you said. 15 points down with Florida State. They come back. They take the lead by eight. That's a 23-point turnaround. And then Indiana finds a way, but the pack ramps and go off the bench. Push those buttons on that sideline. Today, the general pushed the buttons. They came out his way. Good use to that bench by General Robert Montgomery Knight, a Hall of Famer, whose career started right in the garden. When I used to be a young high school coach, I used to come in and watch this young guy at West Point beating all the supers. They called him Bobby Key, baby. He used to explode and get a lot of technicals. Right now, though, he has reason to be happy because a shot to advance with a five-point lead, 37 seconds left, still plenty of time. And up next, it'll be UCLA and Seton Hall. You're always laughing at me. Every time I say something, big spot. This I'm guy's always having, laughing at me. I'm just, just having such it. a great time. I could sit yeah. next to you here in Madison Square Garden watching this. And your beautiful wife, Wanda's here. Absolutely. Hey, I'll tell you, that next game, when you saw Seton Hall and UCLA coming up, Gary DeHair really has become one of the marquee names in college basketball. From right down the road at St. Anthony's in Jersey City. Inside, outside, if you want it, they have DeHair and Jerry Walker. You talk UCLA. Ed O'Bannon, to me, was the best high school player in America when he came out three years ago. Unfortunately, he had that injury, but he told us today, my knee is no longer a problem. I don't even wear any brace. I'm ready to play. And then he had a great message to us. I thought it was a riot. He said, please, Charlie, please come and play with me. Talking about his brother, Charles O'Bannon, who's one of the top five players in high school basketball. He was pleading today for his brother, who was really recruited hard by Kentucky, by Michigan, by Southern Cal. He wants him here. Look at his free throws in OT. Seven for eight. At halftime, Indiana was struggling. They had one less. 
than Florida State. Sura comes around and picked it up by NBA Rain. Nothing there. Wells backed it up. He'll put up a three-pointer and get it. Well, the look at the hoop, baby. Now if you're Pat Kennedy, you try to make the steal There's plenty of time. You try to make the steal. If it's not there, you put him at the free throw line and hope you can come back again with another deuce. That was Florida State's final timeout. Big three. You get one extra timeout in the OT. Let's see who's just standing right here. Is that Graham? It's like Pat Graham who's injured. You have to be concerned when you see him down after a guy who has missed all of last Ooh. year. He had a problem last year with a foot injury that sidelined him for the whole season. Actually, he just had surgery again on that back in March. As recent as that, after missing the entire year, let's see if we can see what happens here. That was just on his own, and he reached immediately for the foot. And if you're an Indiana fan, after knowing he missed all of last year, he had bone surgery, John, May 21st. You look up in there, guy on the same bone, it says here, after the bone had softened. And if he's left foot, that's the one he reached for as well. He broke his fifth metatarsal bone in that left foot during preseason practice last season. He looks in pain right here. Team doctor looks talking to him. What a great game. What a tough luck he's had. See the situation. Timeouts. Indiana has two. Florida State none. Both teams in what we'll call the double bonus, meaning they shoot two on every foul. The possession arrow, if the ball's tied up, it will go to Indiana. This game is not over. Stay in your seatbelts, baby. 20.9 seconds. We've got an eternity right here. So there's the immediate foul. They want to stop the clock, make them go to the line, convert, but that's not the guy that you want out there in that line. There goes Graham to the locker room. It doesn't look pleasant right now. That's a shame. Having Please. a great second half, 14 points off on the second half. Looking forward to this year after missing all of last year. Injuries are really popping up on the college team. Arturis uh, Parnashevis uh, from Seton Hall has got a partial tear of a ligament in his knee. He'll probably play a few minutes. It happened about a week ago. It was a grade one tear. That's 32 for Cheney. That's a career high. It's not only his 32, John. It's his presence on the floor, his passing ability. The defense really reacts to him a great deal. But I just see so much of an improvement from last year in Robert Cheney. Just watching him here and watching him on a tube against Tulane. Florida State needs a quick one. With no timeouts left. Back to two again as Sura drives. Five seconds left. Dangerous pass. Almost going away. There's a quick foul. Could have got the ball up the court wide open. Henderson, nobody near him. That was a dangerous pass to float that pass in the backcourt like that. You throw it up. But Pat Kennedy, no quit this guy. I mean, he's fighting, fighting. Sartorial splendor. Look at his dress. He learned that from Jimmy V. Had a dress like that at Iona. Absolutely. At least wow. that's Jim will say. <laughs> He loses tonight, Jimmy says, hey, I don't want to get credit for some of those decisions. He doesn't know him when he loses. He yeah, only knows him when he wins. When he wins, he said he uses all my stuff. Cheney with a chance to ice the game if he can hit both, but he misses one. And so Florida State, regardless of what he does with this one, will still have a shot to at least go to overtime. If you're in the end, you just don't want to retreat defensively. You don't want to foul, but you want to put some pressure after the conversion right here. Three points are going to serve it to the look. Has to be a three, but no chance okay. for it. And the clock expires with the Indiana Hoosiers. A three-point winner, 81-78. What a super first game. There's Pat Kennedy and Bobby Knight talking. Kennedy went down to spend a day with Bobby Knight about two weeks ago. Bobby talking to Wells. And he went down and he said what he learned is, number one, you have to play man-to-man -man defense if you ultimately want to win national championships like Duke, like UNLV, and like Michigan and Indiana. And he really enjoyed his visit to Bloomington, Indiana. Calvert Cheney with 34 points as Indiana wins 81-78. We'll see you with the second game, but right now, let's go back to Tom Meese. All right, John and Dick, thanks a lot. Catch your breath. Indiana led by two at the half. They win by three in overtime, 81-78.